everyone, and thank you for coming here to uh, remember a great man in Pat McNally. Uh, on behalf of my uh, whole family, especially my mother, Pat's better half, uh, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to reflect and remember the great life of Pat McNally, a.k.a. Footy or Footster. <laughs> Today is Footy's Day. The day I'll always remember, and as well, I will get the last word. <laughs> I think he'd be looking down at me and just trying to figure out what I was going to say or how he could come back with a smart-ass comment. Uh, so let the games begin. I'm not a person to be uh, short on words. Thanks, Dad. I got that from you. Dad always told me, Wiener, you can be anything you put your mind to. But first, you little bugger, you got to find one. <laughs> Where does a person start to talk about his life? There's so many memories, laughs, jokes, smiles, and of course the occasional snort. As many of you know, Pat used to snort really loud after a good chuckle. And for years, people would buy him pigs, piggy banks, pig figurines from all over the world, and they were very unique. There are thousands of them scattered all over the house. And now, Mother, they're yours to clean and look at. Putty had a special gift, a gift he never knew he had. It was a power to draw people to him, young or old, you just couldn't resist, no matter how hard you tried. It made you want them to tell stories, share your life, your troubles, and just about eat everything that you can think of, even acting crazy or silly. But also with this gift, you knew he cared, as it carried around through your body as you talked and joked. Wow, did this make you feel great like you're someone special, brilliant, and of course, warm and content. And for that, Pat, I thank you. Throughout his teaching years, thousands of kids, young adults, got to be treated by his keen wit, sense of humor, and most of all, his caring, caring, compassionate heart. A couple of weeks ago, I bumped into David Cameron, who I didn't really hang around with at school, but I thought he was gonna come and say, John, hello, how are you doing? Hey, bud, nope, it was, uh, how's your dad doing? <laughs> so then David told me a story of how Dad just knew how to push people the right way. David was failing some classes, and Pat, the smart bugger he was, called David into the office. And he said, David, it's all right, not everyone is smart, and, he, and can do good in school, and I'm sorry you just have to accept this. <laughs> David was pissed right off. <laughs> Who did this old bugger think he was, and who was he talking to? He had to prove him wrong. David passed, and still to this day, knew the reverse psychology Pat used, and of course he fell right into it. <laughs> and Dad did get the last laugh. Or like the time my brother Colin and Todd Davis were not being the best students a teacher could ever have in band class. He told them both, you know, I'm not stupid. We all know you can't play your instruments with it. Mm. <laughs> I bet you can't even play Old Canada. So, so the bet was on, and Colin and Todd had to play Old Canada over the intercom for the morning announcements at school. It was hilarious. And he was right, they couldn't play with it now. <laughs> or when we were family camping, a, a favorite pastime was his, and he enjoyed it very much. Dad, after a few sociables, which he kind of had once in a while, decided to take my brother Mike's new bike for a ride. Mike and I woke up in the morning on the bottom bunk, looking up, and there was Dad on the top bunk, all cut up and bruised. <laughs> we went outside to investigate. Did someone steal the bike, or did someone beat up Dad? He was a fighter? To our surprise, Mike's new bike was all bent and wrecked. We went and woke up Dad and told him that the bike, about the bike, and his comment was, there's a lot of wild and crazy wild animals in this park. <laughs> and they must have taken the bike for a test ride. <laughs> and that he would investigate it later. And even to this day, he swore the tree jumped out at him. <laughs> he was a very proud grandparent. He loved Colin, Shirley's girls, Candace and Vivian, and Mike and Chisuk's little Emmett. He always made the time to dry them around and spoil them rotten, as I thought he'd like to show them off. He did anything to get someone to stick up and strike up a conversation with him, and he loved to talk about them. His pride and joy was going to his cabin for the summer, and I was always right there waiting to go 
and it was always an adventure. Food consisted of slow-cooked meats, with everything that was laying around the house at the time, hot dogs, and of course, freezies. All my friends and neighbors knew Buddy had the freezies, and he'd always say okay. He made, he made many good friends there, uh, but only a few really touched his heart, like Pat and Cindy Monaghan, and Gordy and Carol Tulloch, and then there was Lolly, the queen of trivial pursuit. <laughs> a game Dad made everyone play, and I still believe that he could read upside down and he memorized every card. <laughs> Lolly was so proud one night as she beat him in cribbage, and she bet him they had to have bet a dollar, and I kept that dollar, and it's in the back. I still can't cash it, but I'd love to. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so with that in mind, Pat. He always drove out there to visit Carol and Chad and Cindy and take the time to always say hello. And he'd take him for a cruise in his car and a little bit of sightseeing. I would like to say to them that they meant so much to Dad and to take comfort in the fact that I feel the same way about them. And they'll always be part of my life as well. And then there was Twert and Maddie Bray, the dry cleaners, <laughs> with attitudes. <laughs> Many gags were played in that shop on Main Street, like the stone together pockets, the extra starch shirts, and even a little bit of streaking down the street. <laughs> For every year. <laughs> and then the curling team. Glenn Irving, Ted Tchaikovsky, Dick Rathgear, classic bunch. None of them could curl, but they sure talk in the room. <laughs> Noreen Knowles, very good friend of Pat's. And his little birthday buddy, Logan Kowalchuk, they always spent their birthday together and exchanged cards. And last but not least, his ski racing partner, John Smith. They had an annual race at the ski hill, and yes, some drinks were involved as well. They would go from the top of the bunny hill to the bottom as fast as they could. And for Dad, the problem was, how do you stop? He went right by the handle toe, through the crowd, through the field, across the road, through the fence and stopped in another field. And then all you heard was a snort. <laughs> and the snort was because he won. <laughs> but one person really stood out, a person he loved to no end. This was Kathy Cochran. He looked forward to the morning coffee at the Cochran's and couldn't wait to steal the coffee from the office to go up there. <laughs> and of course, he always took McCoy, our dog. Kirk told me many times that that dog, all he does is chase my cats and shit all over the yard. <laughs> <laughs> but he still allowed them there. The bond that Kathy and Dad shared amazed me. If only all of us could have someone as special as her in our lives, I know, Kathy, that he'll always be looking over you and your family like you were his own. For Mom, our rock, the root of our family, and the person to go when we're all in need. Dad was a better person because of you, and would never have been the man he was without you. You were always there to pull Dad and us through the ups and downs of his life and ours. You always remained strong and understanding, and you made us the family we are today. Dad always knew that no matter what happened, you'd be there for us, and that you were in, we were in great hands. I'll always be there for you, Mom. I love you. When Dad retired from teaching, he kept on giving and educating. He enjoyed making others laugh, smile, and sometimes cry. Many times I've met strangers and they ask me, are you related to Pat McNally? And I always say, yeah, that's my old man. And never once did I hear a bad comment, but there's always a funny story or a great comment. Uh, early 2004 or five, uh, Dad had a serious health scare. He ended up in Echo Lodge. I'd go and visit him, and I saw a different man, one I never knew. It scared me. And there was nothing I could do about it, but Pat knew what to do. He fought and learned how to beat the odds, and beat them he did, with the help of his good friend, Tina, and the rest of the wonderful girls at Echo Lodge. He started to recover and make a new journey, and for them, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. He climbed out of his wheelchair and walked right out of the place, a feat not many people have done got back into his car, and he drove, and drove, and drove some more. <laughs> it got to the point, any time of day, or in any strange road or highway, there was Pat with his Canadian flag, <laughs> in the wind, his freedom. 
So his nickname to me went from Putty to Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> but there was no Daisy. There was my dog McCoy, his best bud. McCoy passed away in January of this year, and Dad was crushed. His best friend, his best bud, his wingman, co-pilot, and best friend gone. He made me get McCoy cremated and told me he wanted to get his ashes spread with theirs over the favorite spots throughout this beautiful valley. The valley in which he touched so many people, he'll always be my best bud, my wingman, and co-pilot, and a man I don't think I could ever replace. He was one in a million, and if we were all half the man he was, this town is in good hands. So to one of the best, and hopefully not the last great man, I cheers you, Dad, my friend, my teacher, husband, and most of all, our friend and companion. You'll be remembered and never forgotten. I thank you always for being there with all my love. Wiener. <laughs>